Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my long overdue eye look with the Scott Barnes Snatural Palette. I picked this up, he was having a sale on his site and basically I was able to get this neutral eyeshadow palette as well as his blush palette for like a hundred bucks. I found a coupon code and so I managed to get it at quite the steal and like I had mentioned in a previous video I had done some research and I hadn't really seen anyone with my skin tone review the Scott Barnes product so I thought this video may be useful for you guys. So if you ever think of brands that you're looking for reviews with somebody that has a complexion similar to mine, definitely feel free to mention that stuff in the comments. It totally helps me out to know what you guys are looking for on YouTube. So anyway, without further blabbering, let's get into it. I'm so excited. I have been putting off filming this palette video because I got lazy last weekend and all kinds of excuses. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, these shimmers look so beautiful. I don't even, I don't even know where to start. So I'm just going to grab this big fluffy AOA E127 brush and go into the shade. I think I'm gonna go into this shade Foxy. It's just like a medium brown color. And I was gonna look up the prices of these palettes, but I think from what I remember, the eyeshadow palette's like 80 something dollars. And a lot of comments that I got in um, the post where I asked you guys if I should film with this palette or a different palette, um, many of you had wanted to see the Scott Barnes palette because a lot of you were curious about the quality of his shadows. Um, I know previously I had asked about Scott Barnes on Instagram and I had gotten a lot of comments saying people didn't really think it was worth the price point because his products are made in China. Now, I think there are different you know, quality levels. There's a lot of things that are made in China that may not have the best quality are produced at the cheapest prices, but there's also really good makeup that's made in China. And I'm definitely one of those people that I don't really care about price. I just care about like performance. I will buy something from Walmart. I'll buy something from Target. I'll buy something from Louis Vuitton. It doesn't really matter, you know, what the price tag is as long as it does what it says it's going to do. So that shade, Foxy, just blended in beautifully. I love me a good mid-tone brown in the crease. It's like my favorite thing right now. And I'm kind of contemplating a halo eye because I did a halo eye when I filmed with my Nabla palette. And I was like, you know, I should do more halo looks. I should switch it up and try to do new things. So now I'm going to go into the shade, I think Brick House. And I switched to a smaller brush. This is Ultra Ego number seven. And I'm just going to start building my inner and outer corner for hopefully a successful halo eye look. We'll see what happens. The shade doesn't seem to be as pigmented as the shade Foxy, but let's see if we can build it up. This new chair of mine, it's quite the tall chair. I need a taller table. More money, more problems. Just kidding. Okay, so that shade I feel like didn't really pack as much punch as I thought it was going to. So I'm now going to try the shade uh, Bud Boudoir. Boudoir? Boudoir? Boudoir, yeah. It's a burgundy color and I'm just going to try and use it to deepen up the shade Temptation. Or no, Brick House. This palette has a decent mirror. I always use my simple human mirror, but... Okay, so now I'm going to go into the shade Temptation, which is a darker brown. Okay, I'm going to go into the black called Sin. See if it's actually a very dark or not. I'm going to go inside and outside. Okay, I think I got it figured out. I'm just gonna blend a little bit more. The shade Silver Screen is like calling to me. It's like a beautiful 
silvery gold taupey color and siren both of those look stunning i'm gonna go silver screen it's very different from what i would usually use um i'm gonna go wet it let's try it not wet first oh that's pretty it's definitely like a beautiful taupey color This is definitely one of those shades that's like a very um, beautiful color, but it's like a sheer base and the glitter is just like everywhere already. Definitely more of a topper color. I'm going to try going to, oof, nightcap kind of looks like that too. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to have to st stick to silver screen otherwise. If I put down a gold, that's going to change the whole look. I'm going to go back in with the AB Alter Ego Brush and some of the shade Temptation and just marry those two shades together. Shimmer shade definitely felt like it got a little out of control on the first eye. Second eye feels a little bit better. Okay, let's try nightcap just on top a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. It's like a gray silver color. Very sparkly, very glam. So there's quite a bit of fallout under my eyes. But here is the look before I do anything else. Okay guys, so I'm still working on my face and I thought I should do my blush while I wait for my hair to air dry a bit. So let me show you guys my favorite bronzer of the moment. This is the Kosas bronzer that they recently came out with and I chose to buy the shade Medium. I was so nervous because I didn't know if I'd be the shade Dark because I have a pretty tan skin tone and Kosa's products seem to kind of like be a little bit lighter. So I took a gamble and bought medium and I love it. You guys can see that sheen that it gives my skin. Oh my gosh. And like I don't have to be afraid of putting too much on but I love how glowy that is. And so I just wanted to give that bronzer a shout out because it's like one of my faves <laughs> and now let's go into the blush palette when I first saw Scott Barnes's makeup it's the blush palette that honestly caught my attention I was looking at all of his makeup products and the eyeshadow palettes are pretty but I'm like mm, like the colorful palette isn't really colorful enough and then the neutral one was just neutral so it's this palette that really caught my attention because of the shade mango fizz you guys know I'm a sucker for a orange blush so i know he does a lot of mixing i grabbed a clean blush brush this is the morphe r4 and i'm gonna go into mango fizz and just to see like what this shade does on my skin tone so it's giving me like a warm flush on my cheeks it's definitely not as orange as I thought so it's like blending into my skin tone which is fine next I'm gonna go into minimalist and see what the combination of those two shades does wow that's pretty okay so that just made it like a little more neutral let's try crushin and blush which is like a darker shade I love wearing shades like this in the winter time like berry shades Ooh, that looks beautiful <laughs> I really like that wow okay okay I feel very summer cheeks are blushed to the gods and now I'm gonna try glowy and showy I think I'm gonna go into glowy to see if it'll add some glow to this matte look and I'm just gonna drag it around a bit So that's pretty. Wow. I definitely look like I really did the damn thing with the blush today. So that's the blush palette. Now I'm going to go finish off my face and I'll be right back to show you guys the final look. Okay guys, so here is the final look. 
I did add my favorite nude lip ever, ever, ever. This is True Story by Morphe. And then I topped it to give it a glossy look with the Midas Cosmetics number no. five lip gloss. Yummy. This one was sent to me by the brand. I also forgot to record. I did use the shade showy from the blush palette as my highlight so that is that glow i swear you guys i just look so glowy in my videos and i don't know if it's like my camera or if it's just that the combination of everything just works so well i have been wearing the urban decay stay naked foundation these last few days and that's the foundation I have on today. I also did get the Tatcha primer in the Sephora sale that happened recently so I think all of that just works so well. Plus this bronzer is very dewy as well so you guys are always like wondering like how does she look so dewy? I feel like it's the combination of all those products so I'm very happy with this dewy look. I'm not complaining. I'm just letting you guys know if you're ever curious. I was also going to straighten my hair but you know what? I'm just going to channel my inner Eastern Asian foofy black thick hair vibe today. I'm okay with it. It is lunchtime. I'm about to go and eat some curry that my dad made me. So I quickly want to just talk about these palettes real, real quick. So I guess what we can do is start with the Scott Barnes blush palette. Now this baby retails for $58. I feel like he definitely emphasizes trying to look youthful and that might just make sense with his customer base, like his clientele as far as celebrities definitely seem like a little bit more of a mature celebrity which is fine like totally makes sense i personally really enjoyed this palette i was really attracted to the shades i think this is going to be so fun for me to play with in the summertime especially like this pink color called rose i don't really have a blush shade like that because I'm not really into pink blushes but i think since i can like combine the different shades and like make new looks with it i think i'll get quite a bit of use out of this blush palette plus you know sometimes i do my friends makeup so i think i'll be able to use this on a variety of different skin tones now if you are deeper than me i don't know that a lot of these shades will work on their own i think you would definitely need to use crush and blush to kind of deepen it out but i think that's kind of the beauty of the palette so i wouldn't be discouraged by any means and then the two highlighters were really beautiful as well i really enjoyed playing with these two colors i used the glowy shade as a blush topper and then the showy shade was a beautiful highlighter i love how dramatic that looks but it also blended into my skin and there's no glitter or anything like that so i really really like the look of that it also has a nice big giant mirror so if you like to do your makeup on the go this could be a great like travel all-in-one situation for many of you so yeah i'm really happy i picked this up i wouldn't say necessarily that the price point is 100% worth it. It's 58 bucks. That's quite pricey for a blush palette, so keep that in mind. I think the only other blush palette I have probably that costs more than this is the new Natasha Denona blush palette that I picked up during the Sephora sale, but I did get it when it was on sale, so I didn't pay the $80 price tag for it. So those are kind of my first impressions, thoughts on the blush palette. Now, I feel like for the eyeshadow palette, I'm going to be a little more cutthroat. This palette retails for a whopping $84. It's definitely one of the more expensive eyeshadow palettes I own. I do own all the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, so her big 10 pan eyeshadow palettes and a few Natasha Denona's, but I don't think in my eyeshadow palette collection I have anything in the $80 range, so this is probably one of the more spendy, pricey palettes I have. Now, first impressions, I think this is a fun palette. I don't love the eyeshadow look I did today because these shades that I used on my lids are definitely more topper shades. So I wish I had laid down a different shade as the base and then added silver screen or nightcap. That being said, the these two shades are very beautiful toppers. I think this palette is going to be so beautiful for somebody that just wants a neutral palette, has a bit of a glam lifestyle, so they like to dress up for the evening. They do a lot of events or go on outings, but also you can use this 
to go to work. You can use this in the boardroom. If you have a meeting to go to, if you're running errands, like I could see myself getting so many varieties of looks with this palette. I also think this is going to be great for travel because there is a nice mirror and I did use the mirror quite a bit to do this look today. So I do want to do swatches with this palette just so you guys can see it on my skin tone. But okay, so let's do some swatches so you guys can see these up close there's five shades in a row and there's 20 shades in the palette so here is the first row and I have to say this shade angelic definitely caught me off guard it is a duochrome it looks like a white in the pan but it's actually it's got quite the pink flip to it I'm actually wearing that in my inner corners in case you guys were wondering about that so we have angelic saucy muted brazen and laced next row is retro woody vintage starlet and risque next we have brick house siren foxy hollywood and boudoir there's those shades my swatching is getting crazy i need to practice what is going on with me i don't know and then i'm going to swatch the last row on the other hand, just to make it easier for myself. But there are the swatches we have. Temptation, Silver Screen, Femme, Nightcap, and Sin. So I used quite a few of those shades on the eyeshadow look today. And they're very beautiful, very just sophisticated looking shadows, which I think is really quite interesting to be very honest with you guys so overall i think this is a nice palette i don't think you guys should spend 84 dollars on this to be very honest that price point is a little ridiculous i think you guys can definitely find similar vibes in much more affordable palettes and i wanted to bring up two that i have just been loving lately these are like two of my favorite neutrals of the moment the sigma quarter rosa palette is just like life right now i've used this a few times times and it's just so beautiful and again I think you can do daytime looks nighttime looks lots of very sophisticated looks with that palette and I believe the quarter rosa is about $50 or so but so many people have discount codes so you can get it for probably under $50 and then this guy is $40 the supreme nudes by artist couture this one is gorgeous I think this was like the hit palette of the Sephora sale because everyone was grabbing it during the sale if you didn't get it on sale I think it's still worth picking up if you're on the hunt for a stunning neutral palette I have eyeshadow looks with both of these palettes on my channel already so I will go ahead and link them up in the cards for you guys if you are curious to check them out so guys Guys, in conclusion, I don't think Scott Barnes disappointed, but for the high price tag, as far as the eyeshadow palette is concerned, I feel like I was really expecting something a little more, a little more zhuzh. I think these two shades are actually really, really stunning, but I don't think that's enough to carry this palette to that price point. It's pretty expensive I think and so I'm glad I tried the palettes if you're on a budget I would say skip it go for the other two palettes I had mentioned in this video if you guys have any further questions on the Scott Bronze palettes I tried out today let me know down in the comments you guys know I'm happy to answer anything I can for you guys I don't think I'm planning on purchasing any more of his palettes at this time I just wanted to grab two of them and see what the quality is like if it's worth the hype or not it's kind of like a eh you know i try a lot of makeup so it really has to like blow me away and i think the two neutral palettes i mentioned previously definitely did so again go check out those videos thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you in my next video soon bye guys